Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. I would just like to start with an apology for not having had a video out this weekend. I had one recorded, but look, listening back to it, I, just, I don't know, I just I wasn't very happy with the quality. And <laughs> if you've seen some of the <laughs> if you see some of the videos on this channel, you'll realise that that was a very low bar indeed. So <laughs> so I tried to rework it, but it, it wasn't quite working. And rather than put out a video I wasn't entirely happy with, I thought I'd leave it for the week. And, uh, and we'll try and get something else out this weekend. But today we are doing one of our Wednesday shorts. And today, it, those of you who have been listening to the channel for a while may remember that just before Christmas, I did uh, two episodes on my top six, which ended up being like 56, um, favourite uh, fiction books around the Napoleonic Wars. I also did the top non-fiction as well. I... In those videos, I said that I wasn't going to do memoirs because I wanted to do a separate video on that. And this is that video. So, with no... I was trying, I've been trying to put them in order. I think it's very difficult. So, with no real order in mind, these are my top five. Now, number five is a memoir that we've talked a lot about on this channel. I've certainly used it a lot for quotes. And it's the Memoirs of a Polish Lancer. By a guy whose first name I'm not even going to attempt, but his surname is Chlapowski. Now, I've used him quite a lot. It's quite an interesting memoir that he's done. It's very personal. There's a lot of interactions with himself and other soldiers, and also the Emperor himself as well. So it's it's an interesting book. One that I I certainly don't think it's boring. It's a little lighter than some of the ones on this list in Daring Do, but I think that's probably more to its credit than taking away from it, because obviously, while Daring Do is part, and was part of a soldier's life, for the most of the time, it was fairly mundane. So that's a very interesting one. He obviously talks a lot about the 1812 campaign in there, and there's also references to you know his earlier service as well. I should also say as well, I should have said it before doing this one, that all of these books, one of the criteria I've picked is that they're all reasonably readily available. There's one that's going to be quite difficult to get hold of, but I still think worth it. But the rest, including this one, should be fairly easy to get hold of from like Amazon or Goodreads, something like that. One thing that I do very much like about it is it's actually quite short. It's about 150 pages. And it does go into a lot of those small skirmish details, which is why I use it so often on the channel. Really good book, highly, highly recommended. And as I say, not too long. If you, you know, when the world opens up again, if you're going on a flight or a train journey, you could quite easily read it on, you know, in one go on that journey. So the second one that I would recommend is one from one could say the other side of the aisle, and this one might be a little bit harder to get hold of. I've had a look for it, and I can't find it anywhere for a reasonable price. And it's the book The Cavalry Maiden. Now, this was written by an absolutely incredible woman. Spoiler alert, she is 100% going to be a Napoleonic figure at some point. Her name was Nadezhda Durova, and she was a Russian, sort of minor, minor noble woman, who ran away and joined the army, basically. She became a hussar. And it's an absolutely incredible story. I cannot recommend it highly enough. Certainly her, her life story. As I say, I've not unfortunately not been able to uh, get a hold of the book yet. At a, a price that I think is, you know, is worth paying. But uh, she also wrote uh, five novels as well. So if you can uh, get hold of those, then... Uh, you know, it might be worth getting hold of. Perhaps in these um, this world of you know highlighting trans issues and things like that, then maybe there's a reprint uh, in the not too distant future. She wasn't necessarily trans, although she did continue wearing male uh, clothes long after she left the army. So it's you know I don't think she really was trans, but she could fall under that LGBT umbrella. Hopefully that will be enough for someone to reprint her work. And, you know, she'll get some of the attention that I think she deserves. It's an absolutely fascinating story and one that I would highly, highly recommend that anyone reads. So the third one is going to be an absolute classic. I would be surprised if a large portion of my audience have at least never heard of this. But, you know, I'll put it on the list anyway. It is The Recollections of Rifleman Harris. Now, this is quite a famous old school 
memoir, and it's one that you know, it sort of links in with the next one I'm going to recommend. But it's, as the name suggests, about a rifleman and his, um, you know, his recollections of fighting in the Peninsula War. What I really like about this one is that it is the war from a private soldier's perspective. You know, it's it's a war of corporals and sergeants. You know, they're they're as high as the people who he uh, he talks about. Yeah, you know, I mean, obviously he talks about senior commanders as well, but it's mostly about the the war from that private eye view. It's very it's a little confusing. The edition that I read had some bits out of order, so it might be worth sort of you know keeping a, a dictionary or Wikipedia close by. Just, you know, to orientate yourself at the start of each uh, chapter. But, to be honest, that doesn't really matter hugely, because each chapter is almost self-contained. I, it's, it's, I, I, I'm not sure if it's still available in print, but it's been available in print for so long, you should be able to pick up a copy reasonably cheaply. The Recollections of Rifleman Harris. If you're interested in the, uh, the British Army and, you know, a soldier's... Uh, a soldier's point of view, shall we say, from the lower ranks, then that's highly, highly recommended. One that goes sort of with it, but not, is going to be number two on my list, and that's the memoirs of Sergeant Burgoyne. Now, Sergeant Burgoyne was in the Imperial Guard, and he, obviously, as the title would suggest, was a sergeant, so slightly higher ranked than Rifleman Harris, but he's still that reasonably low-level view of the war i quite like it it's uh, uh, together with rifleman harris there's loads of things in there that would make excellent skirmish games a lot of scenarios presented there's one where he's probing the russian pickets in 1812 that's quite a good one it, it starts off with him leaving the peninsula so there's not a huge amount about the peninsula in there but central europe and you know russia uh, figures very very large in that uh, that work it's again. It's very good. It's it's quite a bit. It's quite long, to be honest, but uh, it's full of that flavour that I think the Napoleonic Wars really has, and can sometimes be lost a bit when you're looking at the the overall history books. And speaking of flavour, we get to number one, and it had to be. It's the exploits of Baron Marbot. Now, the fact that the title of the book is the exploits tells you something about what you're in for. This is an absolutely phenomenal book. It's it's non-fiction. It is a autobiography. I'm not <laughs> I'm not entirely sure. I believe everything in it, but it's so good. It's full of all the daring do that you could ever want. It reads like a sharp. And it's no coincidence that it reads like the novel by Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, or the novel series, I should say, The Adventures of Brigadier Gerard, because they are very closely based on the exploits of Baron Marbo. It's, it's a crazy story. There's stuff in there that's absolutely brilliant. I'm going to do... Uh, I've done it in one of my videos, ooh, maybe two years ago now, where I talked about... Uh, there's a passage at the Battle of Eilau, where a Russian grenadier bayonets his horse. I'm not gonna gonna go into it too much because I want to do that as a Wednesday night quote. But uh, the exploits of Baron Marbo, I cannot cannot recommend highly enough. He was an ADC, and he sees a lot of stuff firsthand. He also hears a lot of things. He's badly wounded twice, which gives you some you know some indication of the other side of it. As I said to about Rifleman Harris and Sergeant Burgoyne. They're very much from the private soldier or you know the line soldier's perspective. This is very much not. This is a guy who hangs around with marshals, other generals, Napoleon. This is the this is the personal account of someone who was very close to the centres of power. I cannot recommend it highly enough. It's it's so it's it's everything that I love about the Napoleonic period. Maybe not be to everyone's taste, but it brings all the colour, the dash, the elan. Everything that makes the Napoleonic period, in my opinion, the best, most exciting military history period that, that, that there's ever been. So there you go. That's my top five. I want to try and keep this video under 10 minutes. I've not been doing very well at that recently. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you for putting up with the missing episode this weekend. They're 95% sure there will be one this weekend. Thank you very much for listening, and I shall see you then.